now our host, Stephen Lee Morris. Robert Egan has been leading the Ojai Playwrights Conference for 21 years. This season will be his last year before he moves on to other endeavors. Robert Egan came up in theater through the Seattle area. He was associate artistic director for the Mark Taper Forum, always having a specialty in new play development. The Ojai Playwrights Conference, which starts in on August the 7th and runs for a week, um, is not a producing entity. It is a play development entity. Robert Egan, welcome to Animal Farm. Thank you very much, Stephen. It's good to see you again. We've known each other for a long time. For a long time. For the better part of a century, should we say that? No, I don't know. <laughs> Half century. <laughs> Half century. Um, you have been in play, you've been produce, the producing artistic director of the Mark Type Forum. You run the Ojai Playwrights Festival. All of your professional work in the theater has concentrated on new play development. And that's been for, seriously, 40 years, is that? accurate yeah uh maybe 45 yeah 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 maybe 50. <laughs> so i would like to pose um a contentious question sure. that comes from playwrights um that i speak with and also literary agents and what have you and this is really not about ojai where you you are actually stepping down this year this is your final year at ojai. Final year, yes um, and we'll get to that but um, it's perceived by many of the playwrights I'm in touch with and their, and their representatives, how difficult it is to get in, into um, a, a forum in which their work can be seen because the shop is closed. That, that is what we hear over and over. The it's a closed system. And um, I actually once, when I was writing with the LA Weekly, I put that in print. This is um, I, regarding the South Coast Reps Pacific mm -hmm. playwrights. Actually, I said, look, all these writers, they keep choosing about, they have a stable of about five writers that they keep recycling. And, and, and they got so annoyed with me that they stopped inviting me back. Um, so I understand how sensitive this is. And your idea is one philosophy is, look, we we don't work with plays we work with playwrights and our job is to nurture playwrights therefore ergo you don't bring in their really hot play and then abandon them and so that's why they keep so i'd like to hear from you as a producer and um a, a executive administrator in in various new play development programs how do you keep how what is how do you address the issue of keeping new play development as an open marketplace of ideas and aesthetics? Let me talk about uh, OHI, which I've been involved, I've run essentially for 23 years, um, OHI Playwrights Conference. And then I'll reflect a little bit on Center Theater Group, uh, where I spent uh, 20 years um, as the head of new play development. Um, one of our mission statements, so we are not a producing organization at Ojai, we mm -hmm. are a developmental organization. So there are different priorities when you're not in an institution doing new play development, which is essentially, you know, in general, you're trying to find product for your various stages to produce, right? Um, we are not in that business which I, I very intentionally did not want to be in that business anymore. So our fundamental mission at Ojai is to fulfill the vision of the playwright. Uh, we are unashamedly a social, political, cultural organization. Those are the kind of plays that are taking on the big challenges of the moment we live in. Um, we are big P political, not small P political, unashamedly in that we are looking for plays that deal with for the, re the relationship between individuals and communities and this thing we call the larger social reality within the dominant ideology within which we find ourselves. Um, that's kind of what we do. Uh, how do we keep it um, a fluid, um, 
not a stagnant mix of just one group of writers. Well, one way is we have 18 readers. Uh, it's an extraordinarily diverse, highly intelligent, very theatrically experienced and savvy group of readers. We solicit everywhere throughout the country and in some cases around the world. And when plays come in, every play is read at least twice and given a full vetting within this uh, body of readers and adjudicators. So you really do hear about every play, both in terms of its form and its content. Um, so if someone gets excited about something, regardless of the name, it's going to move forward in our process. The other thing that's important is we really value diversity. So that's not only ethnic diversity, but it is geographical diversity. We have a great commitment to the Southern California community and then America at large, but generational diversity. We want to have emerging writers, mid-career mid writers, and in some cases, a Terrence McNally, you know, veterans of, uh, of the stage, all in the room together in development. When you do that, you're going to have a very fluid pipeline. Mm -hmm. You're going to always be looking for new writers. We always have writers in our program. In some cases, one year it was Richard Cabral. He had just gotten out of jail. He had never written a play in his life. True Tron, Steve Connell and Sekou the Misfit. I could go down the list, you know. Will Arbery, first play. I mean, he's a big playwright now, uh, Pulitzer Prize. He developed his first play, um, one, one of his first plays with us. So if you're looking for that mix, you're going to mix it up. Um, so let me jump, if I may, Stephen, to the other side of it, when you're in, in an institution. I get it, you know, when uh, regional theaters have playwrights that they've worked with, developed in the early stages. Uh, they've had either local citywide or regional hits. Maybe these plays have gone on to some national acclaim. And they so they built up an audience, right, that people will buy tickets for. Mm -hmm. And there you get the marketplace and capitalism and uh, you know, <laughs> commerce you're going to keep putting those people on the stage if your bottom line of your theater and the ideology of your theater and the board is we in order for us to uh you know validate our raison d'etre it's we keep the seats filled we have box office or things are being broken um fortunately i never worked in a theater like that uh 20 years at the mark taper forum uh when i got to the taper, Gordon Davidson said to me, you know, we're, uh, we were um, really excellent at play development, uh, f I don't know, for maybe the first 15 years, um, of 20 years, you know, shadow box, children of us are God. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. We haven't, we haven't, we, we've lost that mantle. And uh, I was doing new play development in Seattle. Can, may, may I just clarify, you've lost them the mantle this is at the the mantle of the, the the theater at large and maybe even the city is no longer looking to us this is when gordon was there this is when like gordon brought me in yes i and see let, I let see. us usher in the new era mm -hmm. um so that thus began a program you were in the new work festival um but also what began were the labs yeah so, yeah, uh, blacksmiths. There was a, an African American lab, a Latin Latin Latinx lab. Um, it's a disabled lab. A disabled lab, um, and so uh, African American lab. So they had complete autonomy. So they were in the community primarily in Los Angeles and Southern California, but they were moving nationally and bringing in writers and developing material completely. They were financed and they were doing it <clears throat> autonomously. There was no interference. Gordon and I knew the table of power 
could not be dominated by two white guys. And I'm talking about 1982, 83, we knew this. We lived in an eclectic city, an ethnically diverse city, a culturally diverse city. We had to represent that city in all of its glory and diversity. So the labs formed, you had Luis, uh, uh, Jose Luis Valenzuela, then Diane Rodriguez and Luis and Lisa Peterson and Che Yu and Lee Richardson. Yes, Vicky yes. Lewis. I mean, it was an amazing group of people. Well, guess who was sitting at the table with me there choosing plays? Those people. Stanley Sobel, our casting director, the full artistic contingent, which was vast, and some guests sat in, we read the plays, so there was no way you were going to get, during that era, those 20 years, a kind of, you know, again, stuck pipeline with only certain writers. Again, it was very fluid because people were pushing new writers, writers that were mid-career, writers that were established. You know, Robbie Bates came through there. John Stepling was working in the theater. You know, so at, May I ask, with this cadre, at either Ojai or Center Theater Group, in terms of you've got a selection committee, um, does it need a consensus to get a play on, or can you have one advocate who is so passionate about yes, a you play? Could, you could, you could, you could. I remember when uh, someone from our staff at Center Theater Group really advocated for John Belushi. John yeah. Belushi. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I always want to say Belushi. Yes, uh, I understand. And, uh, or really advocated for Luis. Uh, and, you know, when you have a strong, intelligent, articulate person, it becomes infectious. And everybody's, you know, but you need leadership like Gordon, and I like to think of myself, that are both responsible for the institution and artists flowing through and us being really representative of the community we live in. And we were also a very generative theater. If, if you remember during that time, we wanted to build everything in LA. Um, so, um, you know, we just wanted to make, we had such distinct and I think pretty rigorous uh, levels of development from the labs to the new work festival, to taper two, to the main stage. So if a play, Angels in America went through all, it, did, it didn't start in a lab, but it had two years in the new work festival, part yes. one. And part two. Yes. Then it went to taper two. No one remembers that. Right. Uh, it had a, a, a full production in taper two, and then it went to the main stage. So Gordon, you know, wanted to make sure that Projects were ready, projects were developed. He took great pride that we were doing this in-house uh, Kentucky cycle. When you it developed that around the same time, but within yeah, the same, same two time. years. And, yeah. and, and Robert only had three, be, three, be, three, three, three little short bits of the full cycle. This would be Robert Schenken. Just Robert Schenken. And who was the advocate for that? I'll never forget, sitting in a room, Oscar Eustace. Mm -hmm. This play is important. It's about American history. We need to listen to this play. And we listened. And you, theaters that choose plays in a vacuum, you know, so they haven't read them, they haven't workshopped them, they haven't developed them. It's hard to make decisions. You're, you know, then they tend to fall back on New York reviews. Does it have a pedigree? We have never really challenged our audience. We haven't brought them into this process. We haven't activated them courageously and we want to see new work. We want to be a part of the process. We take great pride in that. Then, you know, you have an audience that's sitting back and going, I want to see the ones that have won multiple Tony Awards, you know, mm -hmm. have, you know mm -hmm. blah, 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 that have a pedigree and then I'll give pay. I felt we were cultivating back then an audience <clears throat> that kind of demanded from us, you know, excite us with new work. We want things built here. We want to be a generative theater in Los Angeles. So uh, that, that's kind of a long winded answer of how we avoided getting stuck. And I, I don't think certainly during my time at the taper, we did make decisions that were, for, you know, we knew would be <laughs> sell a lot of tickets. Um, 
But th those were rare, rare occasions, you know. W without naming names, is because I don't. It's not fair to put you on the spot. But is there credence to the argument to the argument I was just articulating? That I there, think are there is, sure, sure. Yeah. There is absolute credence to the fact that. Um, look, the, the I can only tell you my experience. Sure. The staff at Center Theater Group. Luis Alfaro, Che Yu, Lisa Peterson. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to talk about one era. Mm -hmm. um, Lee Richardson, Vicki Lewis, um, Oscar Eustace. They would not allow me or Gordon to be complacent. They would not allow us to make purely commercial decisions. They were always pushing the art, always pushing new voices. Uh, that's why we kept expanding and expanding the programming. Uh, and I would will tell you, Stephen, the benefits to the theater were enormous. I, I say this jokingly, Disney is run by all the people that came through those programs as stage managers. And uh, Roy Conley, who won an Academy Award for whatever that figure eight, uh, Big Hero 8, um, you know, these are great people, talented people, and we found them in all those programs and all of that talent. And they were from every community in Los Angeles, percolated up. Uh, and Ojai is the same way. The, the staff, uh, we challenge each other. Uh, they will not allow complacency. You know, there's, there's one person uh, in particular, uh, Sasha Emerson, uh, Logan Vaughn, uh, you know, they are always at, at Ojai, new voices. We need the new voices here. We need the new blood. We've got it. We have a responsibility. Uh, and I, I feel like we've been a real lifeline to a lot of those young writers that uh, that have, you know, are out there very lonely, not being seen, not being mm. heard. Trust me, anything mm. that is sent to us is read, read twice and vetted among 18 artists sitting in a room. If they hear something that is in any way of interest to them, they go, it needs another read. I mean, we read and read and read. Um, and when we narrow our process down to 20 plays at the end, um, it's a very, uh, Jeff Liu, who's one of our great dramaturgs uh, and a director, he said, Bob, you run it like, uh, it's, what did he call it? Democratic consensus. <laughs> um, mm. Everybody's heard. We get where the weather weather veining is in terms of passion for our mission. Our mission is key. Our mission is key. We want plays that speak about the world we live in. Because um, if we're not there, they're not going to write them. Um, and then, you know, the, these things I talked about when I began. We, we want plays that are ideologically challenging. But we want generational diversity, ge geographic diversity, ethnic diversity. So we, if you look at our program over the years, it really is very representative of you know what's happening out there in the country. In some in some cases, we're ahead of the curve. You know, we were talking, Stephen. I don't know, eight years ago, um, the title of our conferences were Across the Great Divide. I mean, we saw this polarization mm, mm, mm. Um, and uh, we've been talking about it for a long time. And now I think we're beginning to move toward the future, I hope, you know, about where we go now with all the the great challenges and troubles we have. But, but I, so that, again, I think that's the way, but yes, if, if you, there are, uh, theaters, I think there there are that are there. I think I think it's getting less so. But you know, you 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 have people you're talking to that are. Um, I think the the events, George Floyd, the pandemic, uh, and the pandemic has raised I think a lot of really deep existential issues in our culture about death and the fragility and value of life. I think Will Arbery is one of the great. Uh, playwrights sort of meditating on that. Uh, Robbie Bates, his play um, that I did, I'll Be Seeing Ya, that movie that he mm. wrote. We did, mm. It was very much about that. But I think given that, I think, you know, the communities that have not been heard, I think are very vocal now and holding theaters uh, t 
you know, their feet to the fire. You've got to be doing voices that represent the larger community. So I think things are shifting. Um, but no, uh, we, we, for everything I just talked about, that's why we didn't fall into that rut. You are retiring yep. af from Ojai after, at the end of this season. Yep. Um, well, I will ask you after this why you're retiring, but I first want to ask you, you you've been extremely articulate about, articulate about the values you hold and what you feel you, is your success in actually adhering to those values in, in developing new work. Um, do, is there anything you would have done differently on, in retrospect? In my career? Uh, in, in the new play development process, yeah. Do, do you think, were there mistakes like, oh, when you look back and you say, ah, oh, damn it, I wish I could have handled that differently. And I'm not talking about many, I'm, I'm talking about principle. Are there any principles you think where you held the principles and it just didn't manifest itself on yeah, the stage? Interesting, or... interesting. Um, you know, I would have to say I've been very lucky and very privileged, <laughs> white guy talking about privilege, uh, in that where you began the conversation, I never had to work at a theater where uh, commerce and selling and sort of bare bones, <clears throat> raw capitalist principles led the way. Um, I always worked at the taper before that the Seattle rep before that companies I ran and are, they, oh, I, are these theaters um, the, are they exceptions to the rule because they say that every I think they every, may be I, I you know I yeah they, they certainly are I the taper I think was during it when I was there it was a, definitely an exception to the rule um, but um, uh, they say we get a theater that reflects the values of the culture. I think now, as, as you have pointed out a couple no, of I think it's true. I, I, for years, I said that uh, I felt that unlike Europe, you know, the American theater was not very political. Yeah. And I'm talking about big P political, any kind of real deep, um, rigorous, uh, refracting look at the culture, the deep, the deep, deep resonance of what it means to live in end stage capitalism. Uh, what is happening in this country in terms of class and race. Uh, I had an artistic director when I did a show with Steve Connell and Sekou the Misfit, which was called The Word Begins, and the poster's right behind me, um, a hip-hop show, and it was all about race. A great show. These guys were dynamic and amazing. Obama had them at his uh, coming out party with Oprah Winfrey. They performed. Yeah. Uh, they're very, very uh, deep and smart in examining American culture. And this artistic director said to me in 2000, you know, it was what, uh, f five, six, we were doing this, seven. Race is no longer an issue in the United States of America. <laughs> really, that statement was said to me by a leader of the American theater. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you don't, think deeply <laughs> about the culture you're in and yeah. want to challenge it and examine it and ex you know what i say is you know explore the deep uh fissures and lacunae and um what are the deep forces at work that has created the trouble we're in today then you're going to get a theater that's purely about entertainment you know what i mean entertainment without examination i find brecht incredibly entertaining. I find Robert O'Hara, the great African-American director and playwright, incredibly entertaining. I Thinking is incredibly entertaining, being challenged, thinking about the horizon of the country. You know, that it's not, it's not, uh, it, you know, it, but you know, there, there are theaters that prefer to give you comfort and affirmative answers to everything. Uh, and, you know, I, when I was, uh, weaned as a young director in England, I knew you put only positive images on the stage, saccharine positive. The audience is 
uh, propelled to do absolutely nothing because everything's solved for you in the theater. Oh, great. Solve, oh, problem solved. Let's go home. Um, but when you create, you know, dialectic that never synthesize and what I call negative image, it's, oh my God, these people are in trouble. Then you, you want to do something about it. Do you find that the, as, as we have entered, you said you, you, you intuited it eight years ago, the, 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 what, the polarization of the country, the country actually eating each other, eating itself alive. Do you find the theater audiences, and I just say theater audiences, is the appetite for challenging work, to, can it sustain this polarization or among the um, truisms of the uh, of this particular era we live in is that people are in silos and they will not tolerate dissent of any kind. How do you have a conversation with people who aren't willing to ask difficult questions, who only want agreement? Um, Stephen, that's a great question. And from my very first days, when I went to the Seattle Rep in the late 70s, there was no new play development at that theater. And I don't know where it came from, Stephen Lee Morris, but I went, sat down with the great director, John Hirsch, uh, a Jew who escaped from Nazi Germany, and Dan Sullivan. Mm. And I said, we're going to do highly political, social, cultural theater here. And they went, how are you going to do that? And I said, <laughs> we have to start it off the main stage and create the audience for it. Yeah. So yeah. for three years, we built an audience with this wonderful, challenging, and conversations afterwards, getting them involved. They demanded that work by my fourth year at the Seattle Rep. That's when Gordon said, oh my God, look what you've done here, come and do that here. Uh, you, it's it's hard work. You don't just throw the work on the stage and expect your audience, uh, if they've not been exposed to this kind of work, to suddenly you know embrace it and become champions of it. You've got to develop them in all of these programs and ancillary programs where they get excited. They're part of the conversation. Then they're going to demand it on their main stage. And you've got to do a lot of great, you know. Uh, community involvement, post-play discussions yes. at a high level, you know, and this is why we're doing it. Gordon Davidson made me meet with the entire audience of the Mark Tabor Forum after every show for one entire show <laughs> and have this conversation with the audience. Yeah. He said, you know, you, you want to keep doing all these new plays? Great. Have the conversation with them. But what do they want to have? Are they, are they proud of this work? Do they want to do it? Because sometimes that work isn't always successful. Uh, yes. yes. But, yes. but it's a lot to do with uh, moving with your audience, moving with your... When I went to Ojai and they asked me to become the artistic director, I sat down with the leaders of the board and I said, this is the kind of work we must do. And... I, I tried to be as articulate as I could, uh, and they said, great. And then we were able to prove it through the work that came through, and they are so excited about the mission. But I, it's hard work. I, um, I, I find that, yes, there is going to be a divide. There's going to be a divergence. There are people that go, oh, my God. Uh, I, w I just want to forget about all the problems. Mm, 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 I don't mm, want to yep. hear about it. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to hear about race. I don't want to hear about class. I don't want to hear about trouble. Uh, just give me something soothing. Um, if that's the way you've developed your audience, that's the reaction you're going to get. I call it boulevard bourgeois theater. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to soothe you, uh, make you forget. I I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I can't if uh, you know when you asked me earlier if there's any mistake I've made it's pro it may be not pushing the really challenging plays mm -hmm. that ask severely unsettling questions you know uh, giving my my uh, Marxist aesthetic background you know they the Marxist aestheticians say there's three kind of plays there's plays of homology so the dominant ideology of the world you live in. Yeah.
they are they create sameness. Yes, uh, yes. Don't question yes. it. Yes. Uh, Neil Simon might be that. And uh, yes. this is not a critique. This is just science, I guess, science of the text, right? Yes. And then there are plays of partial contradiction. So they're asking deep, probing questions about uh, the, the dominant ideological formations, the values, beliefs, and discourses that are coming in, in, in a particular moment of history. And then there are the plays of radical disjunction, like, no trash this we must move on to find the new formation of of our society um so you know sometimes those plays get <laughs> pushed away uh um but you know i, th I as i say i've been fortunate uh I, you know i the other thing is you just want to keep uh listening as an artistic director which i've had a, a the good fortune of being i think if if any mistake has been made it's not listening enough you know mm, 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 uh, mm. and not really being on the pulse of the moment you're in yes someone out there is saying to you robert egan you really need to pay attention to this yeah. uh and uh you need to listen to me right now <laughs> you don't you don't want your ego to get in the way you don't want to yeah, be yeah. a narcissist that go hey you can't talk to me like that i'm the leader here yeah. so uh yeah you know yeah. You, you you listen you listen and process and don't give up your big mission but i've learned so much over the last Stephen, over the last 40 years from my colleagues mm -hmm. uh you know when I came to L.A., I didn't know that much about Latinx theater, but I was really schooled by uh, Luis, Diane, Jose Luis Valenzuela of you need, I, I'm putting this in my own words, but Bob, when you read this play, you really need to, need to understand the contours of our community, how we form meaning in aesthetic and formal ways in theater. It's different than what you know. Yes. So yes. you must yes. enter now into our yes. because you can't really be successful at development unless you're going to enter our cultural experience in our community. And it became a very rich conversation and a rich. The New Work Festival was pretty amazing, as was uh, the main stage during those days. Tell us to close out. Tell us the um, what excites you about this upcoming season, which runs at the Ojai. Playwrights Festival runs from August the 7th to August 14th up in Ojai, and the playwrights featured range from Vivian Barnes to Anna Ziegler to Bill Kane, Stephen Adley, Gurgis, which are familiar names, and a whole lot of other playwrights. What do you feel is the, um, the most resonant aspect of this entire festival collectively, or is there a single part, or is it just as you've mentioned before, it's diversity. Well, we have great diversity in the season. Um, some major African-American women, uh, uh, you know, that uh, Zora Howard is one of our playwrights in residence. Uh, Zakia Young yes. is an actress uh, that has written, who was radicalized during COVID. Um, her play is called Black Suburban Girl. Um, uh, Yana Farron Smith, one of the great new voices out there in the American theater, and Vivian Barnes. Um, boy, what they're talking about in terms of sexuality, uh, assimilation, uh, the deep, deep challenges of women in our culture, particularly black women, um, to survive with auth authenticity and integrity uh, and a sense of their own identity um, is fabulous. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. Um, Bill Kane um, is sort of representative of that uh, more of a veteran playwright, mm -hmm. uh, and Bill. You've been working with him for for decades. It seems like you. you really, you are the, a fan of his, of the, his work. Well, the first play I ever <laughs> read for the New Work Festival at the Mark Taper Forum in 1984 or whatever it was was a 300-page play <laughs> called Stand Up Tragedy yes. by a guy named Bill Kane. Yes, and I yes. went. I 
I was on a trip to New York and I said, I, is this guy for real? Um, and we met in New York and he is a Jesuit priest uh, and was and I thought, oh, this guy's a real deal. Well, he came and remember Ron Link, Ron Link. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and had, yeah. Had a real theatrical flair. So Ron directed, I kind of dramaturged and it went th this process that I told you about. It went from the New York Festival to Taper 2 to the main stage to Broadway. That yeah. was the first play we ever did in the New York Festival. Not all of them did that. Uh, but Bill's back. Yeah, and I love Bill. He's got a, a very unique uh, look at the culture. And he's so full of ritual. Uh, Peter Kim George is uh, an intellectual uh, from the Asian American community who's writing about Los Angeles. Uh, Two Red Tendons. Gerges, you know. Um, Dog Day Afternoon. He's taking on that iconic film and for, for the stage. Matthew Paul Olmos, one of the great uh, Latinx writers in Los Angeles. Uh, a kind of another more mythic look at Chavez Ravine. And this is interesting for me because, you know, I was one of the producers of of uh, Culture Clash. Right. And they did their look at Chavez Ravine. Michael Cheyenne is part of the uh, Iranian Persian uh, community in Los Angeles. And he's doing a very funny look, exploration of culture in that community. He's playing his mother uh, on stage. So it's a really, uh, it's a, so I've got everybody there pretty, yeah, I did. Uh, so it's a great, diverse, it, it represents everything I said we're, we're about, you know. And then, and then another writer in residence is Lindsay Bourne, who's this great queer writer from Canada um, and uh, is really interested in uh, uh, women's issues and uh, the body and so, uh, and also this existential netherworld we're entering. She, 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 one of her plays is about a group of nuns who are facing extinction, kind of. So um, it's a great group. I'm very proud of it. It's a, you know, I, it's kind of a great way for me to go out uh, into the into the future. Um, so. The Ojai Playwrights Conference runs from August the 7th to August the 14th. Robert Egan, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, Stephen, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I always have a lot to say, unfortunately. So. It, it, well, it's fortunate for us. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you so much. If you enjoy Animal Farm, please support us on Patreon.